Welcome aboard, folks. I'm Bill Gladstone from Northview. This is the uh, Queen's Cup uh, 2022 weather briefing. I've got a few items to share and then we'll be handing off. Um, uh, thanks again for coming out. I'm joined this morning by uh, Chris Bedford from Sailing Weather Services. This whole uh, weather briefing is sponsored by North Sales and uh, we're thankful for that. Chris Bedford is uh, the weather coach and uh, co-founder of Marine Weather University. We'll tell you a little more about him uh, later on, but uh, we're really thrilled to have Chris join us from his headquarters and be able to provide the full weather info uh, so we can know what to expect um, or have some idea what to expect for the overnight. Uh, Tom Pease from North Sales is on hand at the club and we'll be handling questions or relaying questions from there. We appreciate him hosting and organizing the program here, as well as Louisa from up in North Sales in Toronto. So once again, Chris Bedford is uh, here from Marine Weather University. Chris is going to take us through the weather forecast, and then I'll be uh, following up on that with some routing uh, suggestions or some routing models um, based on that forecast. So... Um, here we go. I'm going to uh, hand off the share here and make uh, Chris spotlight. Chris, we'll keep moving into that. And um, all right, very good. Good thanks, morning, Bill. Chris. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot, and uh, good to be here. Um, I'm in the uh, the desert in Palm Springs. Uh, it's my my new headquarters. <laughs> So far, far away uh, from Lake Michigan, but uh, most of you know, I grew up in the Great Lakes and I've been forecasting for the Great Lakes for about 35 years. So I have a few under my belt. I uh, will be back there next month at Chicago Yacht Club for the, the Mac races. So looking forward to that very much. All right, so let's get into it. Um, as always, I have a disclaimer and that is, as those of you who live on the Great Lakes know, things can change very quickly. And uh, it's always a good idea to just keep monitoring the weather. You don't, a weather forecast isn't a static thing. It's always changing. There's always new information coming in. The minute a forecast leaves my hands, it's obsolete because it, the data is, the, the initialization data is changing. So make sure you're keeping up to date. Best way to do that is uh, easily is uh, using the uh, NOAA All Hazards Radio on your VHF. Uh, a lot of you use your weather apps these days, and that's great. That's a good way to keep in touch as well. But keep in mind that uh, your weather app is not uh, necessarily an official source of information. And uh, also, it can be running behind, especially if there is rapidly changing weather. Sometimes the radar on your weather app is delayed by as much as 15 minutes, and that can make all the difference in the world. So make sure you're keeping, um, keeping up to date as best you can while you're out there. Uh, one of the other things I like to say, if something doesn't look right, it probably isn't. So that's when you should really be on your toes and, and uh, getting ready for, for the weather to change. All right, in the Great Lakes, we always have to start out with a thunderstorm forecast. Uh, thunderstorms can be a big, big issue for racing on the lakes in the summertime. Uh, right now, this is the official uh, forecast uh, thunderstorm outlook from the uh, Storm Prediction Center. And uh, what they're identifying for tonight, for today and to tomorrow morning, is basically the light green area is sort of an area of general thunderstorms uh, that could occur during this time. You can see it just sort of clips the uh, western uh, edge of our, our area. And uh, to, to, if, when we look at the forecast, we see that that's really pushed towards Saturday morning, uh, probably after most of you are finished, hopefully. <laughs> and. Um, uh, so right now, not expecting anything uh, too severe. On the sort of weather map, sort of the basis on which we uh, look at the weather and kind of generally uh, organize our thoughts, uh, we go from left to right here, surface forecast at one o'clock this afternoon. And then over on the right-hand side is for one o'clock in the morning. And um, we see that we have uh, high pressure basically, which is situated uh, on the lake and um, in the Southern Lakes area down through here. And uh, basically that's keeping us in fair weather right now, keeping this, the skies uh, primarily sunny. And also the wind's very light in the center of high pressure, the air is sinking 
And it's really between high pressure systems and low pressure systems where we get the, the breeze, the so-called gradient breeze coming from. So since we have weak gradient, the primary uh, source of wind that we're gonna be looking at uh, for today is lake breeze. That is the uh, wind that is created by the thermal contrast between the lake surface temperature and the land temperature as it heats up during the day. Land stays, or sorry, the water stays more or less the same temperature while the land will heat up. It will create an, an effective high pressure over the water, low pressure on the land, and that pressure gradient, that local pressure gradient will, will cause the wind to flow onshore uh, from the high pressure to, toward the lower pressure over the land. That's what generates a lake breeze. And then at night, we can have the opposite happen. At night, the land cools down, the lake again stays more or less the same temperature. So we get high pressure, relative high pressure over the land, relative low pressure over the water, and the wind turns around and can flow from the uh, land uh, toward, the, toward the water. So we have this diurnal oscillation of the wind, which is caused by the temperature changes. Um, and uh, that's what we're looking at as, as a feature in our forecast for today. So that high pressure will move to the east uh, today. And you can see that by uh, this evening, it's sitting over sort of northeast Ohio and continues into the northeastern United States uh, by uh, tonight. We're looking also at the uh, Northern Plains where we've got a low pressure area developing and a frontal system developing, and that's gonna be moving gradually to the east. And on the NOAA charts, they're showing an increase in coverage of thunderstorms, of showers and thunderstorms sort of spreading from the Plains states across to the upper Mississippi Valley tonight. Um, and then, as I mentioned, by tomorrow morning, that could be approaching um, that could be approaching Lake Michigan, but hopefully again, after most of you all are finished. Right now we see on the satellite uh, picture, we have a couple areas of, to highlight of, of action, but they're all well away from us and not a big concern. We've got an area of a cluster of thunderstorms over Northern Minnesota, moving into Northern Wisconsin, another cluster down here over Iowa and Northern Missouri. Uh, but basically clear skies across the lake and light winds, we see a little bit of a southwest uh, uh, flow that's uh, partially land breeze coming off the uh, Illinois and Wisconsin shore this morning. In the middle of the lake, it's much lighter, uh, very light winds, generally under five knots. Again, sort of a southerly drift uh, to the wind and along the Michigan shore. Also some lighter winds sort of in the five to 10 range coming in from the southwest and south. Now these uh, thunderstorm clusters here are not expected to be a problem. They should be uh, sort of dissipating now uh, as we go into the, uh, into the morning hours. Uh, we see these on the radar right here and here, uh, but there will be new ones developing back in this area this afternoon and moving uh, generally to the, uh, to the east. We'll look at the radar forecast here in a moment. The, um, we may see some debris clouds from those high clouds coming in from the west from those uh, uh, old cells down there. But uh, right now I'm expecting a mostly sunny day, except we will see some cumulus development on shore indicating those thermals, but on the water where the air is sinking, there shouldn't be any clouds today. All right, so uh, going here to the lake temperature, as I said, this is important for us to understand the lake breezes and land breezes. The lake has been warming up the last uh, couple of weeks because we have had a spate of, um, of uh, much, much warmer weather. It, it's uh, still, running a bit uh, cold though. In fact, it's the uh, second coldest um, uh, the lake has been out of the last six years. Uh, we've had a few years of some pretty, pretty warm lake water this year. It's starting out a little bit in a deficit, but it's starting to recover now. We do have uh, temperatures uh, basically in the low 70s, right along the Michigan shore. Um, but uh, the um, uh, uh, water along the Wisconsin shore is uh, still a fair bit cooler. So that's where I expect the lake breeze to be strongest today is on that Wisconsin shore side. It's going to be uh, somewhat lighter along the Michigan shore side. Some of that is due to this uh, cooler water on the Wisconsin side favoring a lake breeze, but some of it is also dynamic as we'll look at in a second. Here's the forecast radar loop, which starts today, this morning, and then it goes through midday or early afternoon tomorrow. And actually we see that the, the radar is pretty clear over the lake, except at the very end, that's those cells that I talked about that may be moving in from the west and southwest 
uh, tomorrow morning. Again, right now it looks like those don't really reach the lake until uh, sort of mid morning uh, or late morning tomorrow. And so right now I don't think we need to be too concerned about those. All right, looking at the weather at the uh, model run, basically the blues here are uh, zero, no, no wind, and the red is about 20 knots, just to give you a reference point. So the, the wind scale basically increases with time. Starting here at one o'clock, we have kind of a classic lake breeze um, uh, setup where we have the a uh, very light area over the southeastern part of Lake Michigan. This is where the, there's high pressure. Remember I said over the cooler water, there tends to be high pressure. And then over the land breeze, or ten, or sorry, over the land, there, where it's warmer, there tends to be lower pressure. And so the air is sinking where that high pressure is and, and kind of spiraling out uh, onto the lake shores. And you can see that effect if you look at the, the streamlines here. And then you can see it being uh, shunted onshore on the Michigan side as well. But the lake breeze is very limited on the Michigan side. It's a, it's a much lighter breeze and um, its fetch offshore is not as, as, as grand. Here on the, uh, the Wisconsin side though, we definitely have a, um, uh, uh, a better lake breeze. It could be up into the sort of the low to mid teens uh, along the Mich uh, Wisconsin shore. So that's what I'm expecting you to head out into is some kind of a, a sort of a 10 to 15 knot, knot lake breeze. As we go into the afternoon, we actually see how that lake breeze pushes inshore. We can see it's uh, several miles inshore on the Wisconsin side now, but on the Michigan side, it's already starting to shut down. We're past peak heating and our little high pressure, our little divergent zone shifts up a little bit to the north in order to support these stronger breezes on the, uh, on the Wisconsin side. So uh, we actually get the lake breeze sort of shutting down early on, on the Michigan shore there. Going into the evening hours, it looks like the, the uh, uh, the wind shuts, starts to decrease everywhere. Our lake breeze on the Wisconsin side gets quite light and on the Michigan side, it's, it stays pretty much calm. So as heading out toward the east across the lake, we should see these winds start to decrease. Generally sort of southeast winds on the Wisconsin side and then you get out in the middle of the lake and they're more southerly winds. And then during the evening hours, we see the wind uh, the the post sunset hours we see the winds uh, continuing to decrease and actually there's an interesting thing where we're starting to see some more um, left shifted breeze uh, picking up now in the southeastern side of the lake. Some of this is new gradient. We're going to have new fresh southerly component gradient coming into the picture here. You'll see this. Uh, especially towards Saturday morning before those thunderstorms arrive. But then also as the evening progresses, uh, we start to see some land breeze effect as well. And that uh, we'll see that here in the, uh, in the next time step, which is at 1 a.m. We can really see the uh, land breeze component starting to come off the shore here. So a bit of a headed breeze um, coming in off the Michigan side and um, and slowly picking up a little bit, hopefully pu pushing up toward about 10 knots as, as we get in. And then as we get closer to sunrise, we see that southerly start to increase and it sort of increases broadly across the lake, which is an indication that we're trans transitioning from largely thermal component to more gradient component winds, sort of, sort of a more general uh, increase in southerly winds. And then by uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning central time, we see that there's broad uh, increased wind up into the teens. And again, that's because we have those thunderstorms coming in from the west. So as a summary, uh, broken down the winds in the west half of the lake and the east half of the lake and the west half of the lake, you can see that we start in a uh, uh, this lake breeze, which is probably going to be sort of uh, round numbers, sort of 10 to 15 knots. Uh, but as we get into the afternoon, even after uh, the three, four o'clock starts, uh, we see that the wind does start to decrease out on that side. And again, that's as the uh, um, um, lake breeze dissipates. And then we see toward morning, we see it starting to pick up again. And that's again that, uh, that but, but hopefully you'll be long gone out of there by that time. And then uh, for today on the uh, and, and tomorrow morning on the eastern half of the lake, we see that light southeasterly there. And then we also see it dying uh, uh, toward the evening. And then we also see that southeasterly and southerly start to pick up 
on, on that shore. So initially it comes in with a lot of east component and then gradually uh, uh, towards sunrise tomorrow morning veers around and becomes more southerly with times. All right, so that's a look at the overall weather forecast. Now I'm going to throw it back over to you, Bill, and um, uh, that should, um, uh, you can take a look at the routings. I remember how to do that. <laughs> Where are you, Bill? I'm trying to find you. Hang on a second. Oops. There we are. All right, so I understand that uh, Bill's having some technical issues, so we'll just stand by. Sorry, everyone. Ha. I think I'm back. Hello. Yeah, we got you, Bill. Okay. Well, uh, that was a little bit of an adventure. Uh, thanks, Chris. I will uh, get my screen up and um, we'll uh, press on. So the uh, thermals... Uh, and the weather, uh, we'll see what that does. I have a little bit of routing to show uh, based on a couple of different uh, sets of grid files. And we're gonna look at uh, a jib and main boat. We'll look at a small, medium and large boats uh, for comparison. And um, we'll look at, at some comparisons to some previous days. So we have a collection of stuff to take a look at here. The uh, two models I was able to, uh, to, to uh, download and work from were the wharf model and uh, the um, high resolution models that shows the jib and main boats starting a little earlier than the others and finishing in about 12 hours with the wharf and 14 with the others. And you can see the times in there. I won't read the whole thing to you. But uh, based on these uh, listings, I guess we should just hope that the, uh, the wharf uh, version comes through. But uh, what actually happens, that of course remains to be seen. Check with me tomorrow and I'll know for sure. These are some uh, runs we did over the last two days just to sort of prepare um, and uh, pretty consistently leading us a little bit to the north side of the course. There was a little more breeze up on that side and the faster boats, it was worth it for them to go venture a little further up. But gradually that's been changing and uh, the routes have been shifting to the south side of the course a little bit. and. Um, the wharf model's pretty much a rum line shot. The high resolution model has 
as you can see, much uh, lighter and more easterly component, uh, particularly on the um, Michigan side. And um, uh, this is a little closer view of that. Um, so the wharf model, the boats are sailing really straight down the rum line in a consistent southerly. Uh, and in the high resolution model, we're going to step through these uh, um, hour by hour in just a moment. So we'll go through these in a little more detail um, and uh, for different size boats. So um, likewise, just looking at the comparison from yesterday um, at, uh, this is I think for eight o'clock uh, in the evening, um, uh, the minus one version is uh, 24 hours before the start, what the forecast showed then. And uh, this uh, lower one is uh, from this morning's model and uh, pretty consistent actually what to expect on the Michigan side, but you can see um, a little stronger uh, and more consistent breeze following us and behind us uh, on the Milwaukee side. So things have firmed up a little, at least in that forecast model. Um, and here's a, a sort of a step-by-step -step walk through the high resolution model. Um, starting at uh, 1600, four o'clock this afternoon, uh, um, 10 knots, maybe a little more southerly, uh, as Chris was saying, thermal there. And then as we sail out into the lake, a little lighter um, and still out of the south and stepping across by um, 10 o'clock, um, light south wind. And you can see further east, the breeze is more easterly. The uh, faster boats, the TP-52 we've modeled here, um, goes further south. Uh, they go so much faster, they can venture and explore further. The slower boats uh, don't get much as much benefit from uh, searching for more performance or more breeze or better angles. And then as we move across the lake at uh, 10 o'clock, um, the breeze more easterly and lighter, uh, more of an upwind stuff in this forecast at least. And uh, then at midnight, um, actually, uh, clocking and uh, uh, opening up again. Um, so that portion where we were hard on the wind will open up and uh, become a reach again, at least on this forecast in this model. And uh, consistent, a little lighter in near shore as we uh, approach the finish um, well before dawn um, in the early hours of tomorrow. So that's the high resolution a forecast um, based on the GRIBS downloaded from this morning's forecast. By comparison, the uh, wharf model has uh, very consistent south winds bending towards the shores on each side with a little bit of thermal-like effects. Um, and at four o'clock, and then six, eight, ten, just rolling across the lake a little bit of that uh, easterly turn to the breeze, similar uh, backing from what we saw in the high resolution model, backing a little more east and then returning more to the south. So they both show a little bit of, of uh, the breeze backing uh, in the late hours of tonight and then uh, returning to more southerly uh, different wind speeds, but the sort of backing and then clocking again uh, is consistent across the models. Um, if you have questions on these, they're, uh, um, that's pretty quick. We rolled through there pretty quickly. I can back up a little bit, or if there are questions on the wind, on the weather, or on the routing, um, please pop those into the chat. And um, or if you're uh, with Tom at the club, uh, you can add them. Um, uh, you can relay them through uh, through Tom. Looks like we've got a. Whoops. Try that again, Tom, with one microphone. Yeah. 
podcast. Yeah, but. There are no questions. Okay. Well, as uh, Chris mentioned earlier, um, a reminder to always uh, check the uh, um, hazard weather radar or hazard radio and keep monitoring for uh, potential problems. Um, I will uh, take a quick roll, scroll back and just take a look at the overall uh, model here and the steps you can see in the wharf model, wharf model and um, backing up just a little further to the high resolution model and watching out for the light and shifty stuff, particularly on the approach going into the finish. Perhaps we'll see what actually turns out to be the case. Um, once again, watch for the hazardous weather. I wanna thank you all for coming out. If you wanna learn more and make your own uh, predictions and forecasts and your own observations, I'd encourage you to check out the offerings at Marine Weather University, where uh, Professor Bedford is uh, the chief instructor, and uh, you can learn a lot more about uh, weather and uh, your own ability to see what's going on, monitor conditions, and verify the forecasts and gribs with your own observations there. Great collection of materials, so um, uh, I'd encourage you to, to check that out. I want to thank uh, Tom Pease for organizing and setting things up here. I apologize for the little bit of uh, technical challenges. And I would also invite you to uh, send me your boat photos. I love getting pictures of boats, fleets, sails, sail trim. Bill.gladstone at northsails.com. Please uh, send me your boat photos. Beyond that, uh, sail fast and sail safe.